Hello, welcome to Brandex Reviews. This one I'm going to be doing the first part in a series of reviews looking at the Marvel Cinematic Graphic Novel tie-in series. Now, just to kind of explain what that is, obviously Marvel Comics have been doing their own characters like Iron Man and Thor and the Incredible Hulk and so on for a long time, since the 60s pretty much, Captain America even before that. But uh, every now and again they'll reboot it. And what that means if you're unfamiliar, if you've not really read them. Um, obviously over the years, as characters kind of evolve, they kind of they kind of get restricted in what they can and can't do because they've got a continuity to follow. So every now and again they'll do like a... sometimes it's just a soft reboot, um, sometimes it's a full reboot. But they'll, they'll start over basically and you say, right, everything that kind of came before kind of doesn't count now. But uh, similar to what they do with James Bond, every time they have a new actor, so say when like Roger Moore took over after Sean Connery, it's kind of a fresh start, but at the same time there was still a bit of continuity from what came before. So it's, you can kind of sweat the math on it and kind of go into it and say, well, how does that work? But, you know, just have fun with it. I think that's the intention of the people that make these. So, um... Obviously, when the films came out, when they started doing the Marvel... Well, when Marvel started doing their own films, beginning with Iron Man in 2008, uh, those were the first Marvel films that they made themselves, not counting things like Fantastic Four that made by 20th Century Fox and so on. Marvel making their own films with Iron Man and so on. And every film is tied in with the Avengers, basically. Um, when, when that came out, none of the comics, obviously, were in continuity with the films. They were completely separate. I mean, it was based on the comics, obviously, but there was no continuity between the two. So what Marvel did was they started to do their own um, official tie-in comics that fit in with the universe of the films, and it's called the Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-ins. And you, it's a stamp that you'll see on, on some of the fronts of the graphic novels. It kind of looks like that, if you can see that on there. Um, but uh, there's a few of them anyway, there's not a huge amount, they've done about maybe half a dozen um, when, when you actually collect them as books. Uh, I've got all of them so far anyway. And they've done pretty much a, a tie-in with every film that they've released, with a couple of exceptions. Um, the first one I'm going to cover is the one that ties in with Iron Man 1, but I'll also just kind of briefly just show you what, what else the, there is that followed that, so that we can kind of catch up in the other videos. Um, that was the Iron Man 1. I'll show you in specifics, but after that was Iron Man 2, Public Identity, um, Captain America First Vengeance, that ties in with Captain America 1, the first Avenger as it's known in the UK. There are a couple of Avengers ones, there was Black Widow Strikes, which has the, the actual the stamp there. From this point on they start to call them Preludes, so that's Avengers Prelude as you can see on top of the uh, thing there. Um, there's another Avengers prelude one called Fury's Big Week, as in Nick Fury, um, so that ties in with that. There's Iron Man 3 prelude, and there is also Thor the Dark World prelude. And coming out very shortly, there's obviously going to be the Captain America Winter Soldier film, that's Captain America 2. Uh, so there's going to be a, a graphic novel tie-in prelude coming out uh, just shortly before that film gets released. I've got it on pre-order, so I will be doing a review of that in due course. And there's going to be one for Guardians of the Galaxy in August. They tend to release these a couple of weeks before the films have been getting released, so um, something to look forward to. Anyway. But I'm going to start with this one anyway. Um, this is based on the hit movie, it says, I am Iron Man. So it was this was how, the, how it kind of started. The one that I've got is in fairly bad condition. I got it off Amazon and it was second-hand, but it was really cheap, so I didn't mind the fact the cover's a little bit tatted. But uh, that's not what you really want to see anyway, so I won't go into too much on that. But as you can see... Um, I'll, I'll kind of show you some, some of the bits of this as I'm going through it, but um, it's, in, it's broken down into three parts, three three stories basically, it's a collection. So the first part of it, which is probably the, the main thing, it's the main body of it, is it's a graphic novelisation of the film from start to finish. So maybe not as good as the other stuff, because obviously it's, it's, you've seen the film already, you don't really need to read a, a comic book version of it. Then again, you might feel a need to, so fair enough. Um, I'll just show you some key bits of it that you can kind of identify with. The scene in the film where Tony Stark is in Afghanistan right at the beginning of the film, where he's promoting the Jericho missile, you kind of see just looking at it that they've, um, they've stuck to that as well. It's pretty loyal. One good thing about this is, even though it's 
essentially something that we've already seen in the films. There's a couple of little bits that they've added to it just to kind of enhance it a little bit. Um, I'll be specific. So if you're familiar with this bit in the film where um, Iron Man escapes and there's a massive explosion, they've added to it anyway, there's like a little bit of a narrate, not narration, but kind of a voiceover. The guys at S.H.I.E.L.D. are obviously monitoring everything that goes on as best they can and they've spotted that the this terrorist base has blown up and uh, they don't know exactly what's going on so kind of scratching their heads about it but you didn't see that in the film anyway um, it's not a massive addition it's just like a couple of little bits like those bits there are added to it but the rest of it is pretty much what you saw in the film so um, it just kind of shows shield kind of uh, shadowing things and sort of saying you know what's going on here kind of thing uh, what else have we got? There's a couple of little bits that they've added to this. It's, it's the main story. Um, as you can see, like I said, this is when, when he gets the, the full Iron Man suit and he goes back to Afghanistan uh, and um, destroys some of the Ten Rings operations. So again, it's I mean stuff like that is, is very iconic if you've seen the film, uh, the look of it and everything like that. So, um, But there is a bit in it where, it, again, which has a bit more with, with S.H.I.E.L.D. these little bits here you can see that weren't in the film and you've got Nick Fury talking to, I think it's Jasper Sitwell if uh, if you're familiar with uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. and the, the, I think he's in the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. he's in Thor and the Avengers, you'll know who Sitwell is so you kind of see him in this as well briefly uh, but it kind of the rest of it just kind of goes on uh, this is a bit where he's talking to Rhodey and he's got the, the Iron Man suit. Um, I, I'll flick through this because if you've seen the film it's not really all that relevant. Um, you know what the story is kind of thing. Obviously he fights the Iron Monger at the end, Obadiah Stane. And it's all very, very accurate to what's in the film. Um, now what they do, one major addition to this, this story is... The end of the film, obviously after the credits you get to see Nick Fury and he says... Uh, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger initiative and then it ends, you don't see any more than that but um, there's a little bit more after that um, kind of Stark kind of threatens to have him kicked out um, and then Nick Fury just kind of goes on a bit more and says he's going to be keeping an eye on him uh, he makes a bit of a joke about him having one eye and then uh, Nick Fury kind of buggers off, gets on the phone to Coulson and says um, Inform Natasha will be needing her services as he's driving off. So obviously that's to follow in in Iron Man 2, Natasha being the Black Widow who first appeared in Iron Man 2. So this kind of bridges the gap a little bit better. So it's pretty cool to see that anyway. Now that's the first story anyway, that was, you know, that's the, the main part of, of this. There's another one, uh, another story in it that, similar to what they added in that with the whole thing with S.H.I.E.L.D., there is a story which pretty much covers the same, does the same job basically, but it's the whole story um, is about S.H.I.E.L.D. monitoring what was going on during the first Iron Man film. And it's pretty good because it explains why Agent Coulson is kind of lurking around in the film, because he just kind of turns up if you've seen the film um, and starts asking questions, saying he wants to make appointments and wants to kind of debrief. Tony Stark and all that, but you, you can kind of imagine why he's there because they know something's going on. But this really goes into specifics, um, and I'll, I'll show you anyway what, what happens. So it kind of cuts to the bit of the film where um, where Tony Stark's been kidnapped, so you get to see uh, the aftermath of that, and you've got uh, the Shield headquarters. Well, it's not known as Shield at this point. It's just called Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. It's not really referred to as Shield. So Tony Stark's missing. You've got uh, Nick Fury and who's he? I think it's is it Sitwell? He's not Sitwell. Um, Coulson. He's talking to. Yeah, it's, I think it looks like Coulson anyway. That he's talking to. And they're basically saying like Tony Stark's been kidnapped. They're kind of panicking because obviously Stark's got a lot of like weapons building knowledge, and they're kind of thinking well. Tony Stark's lived a life of luxury. It wouldn't take a lot for him to crack under torture, basically. So um, they're trying to get an idea, you know, do we think he's going to start giving them information and building weapons for him, that kind of thing. Uh, they've got to speak to Obadiah Stane and ask him about him. Um, that's kind of... He just kind of talks to him. Not really all that great. Um, then it kind of cuts to where Iron Man builds... Well, Tony Stark builds the Iron Man costume and escapes... 
and uh, it's kind of being monitored by shield and when he blows up the the terrorist base and escapes as, as you see you see in the film he's got the mark one suit the really primitive one they're monitoring it and they can actually get on things like a satellite image of the explosion and they can see a sort of brief outline of the Iron Man suit as it's um, going through a, a giant fireball but they don't really know what it is so they don't really kind of they can't really tell then it kind of cuts to bits in the film where Tony Stark holds the press conference saying that he's no longer going to be manufacturing weapons until he can decide what the best future of the company is that's all in the film but you, again you see it from the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent's perspective they're kind of like hot lurking around and kind of talking and saying you know what, what's going on kind of thing um, there's more conversation with uh, Nick Fury and uh, Agent Coulson and uh, I think there's a bit where he's testing the Mark II suit that's the first one that flies or that the one that's completely silver uh, you see that in the film um, pretty good bit in the film is that and um, obviously goes up too high and he starts to like frost up and falls back down again and then the shield's monitoring all this so you can see them they're watching as he's doing that so they know it's Tony Stark in there anyway and uh, then they kind of piece together that the the Mark II suit that they've seen him flying about in is this is pretty much similar to the this what they saw in that but giant fireball and they kind of put the pieces together and they can see that uh, it's the same thing they zoom in on the footage from um, what happened in Afghanistan and um, they know that Tony Stark is Iron Man and that's how he escaped but they're kind of thinking and this is where this is where it's kind of good they're kind of thinking that uh, maybe Tony Stark is building the Iron Man suit for the terrorists uh, you know maybe he's sold out and he's working for them as it turns out it's actually Obadiah Stane that was working with the terrorists but uh, they're kind of theorising you know maybe it's Tony Stark that's actually doing that so uh, that explains why Coulson is wanting to meet with him why they're, why they're investigating everything in the film, um, which is pretty good that it, that it explains it there. Anyway, now uh, it kind of goes on a little bit more. Um, I'll just kind of flick through it. There's a bit more of some more of the events that happen in the film. He's obviously he goes back to Afghanistan with his Mark III suit. That's Iron Man, where he's kind of um, red and gold kind of colour. And um, I think at this point, Shield kind of figured that. Uh, well, Nick Fury kind of figures that if if I if Tony Stark was working with the Ten Rings, why would he be going over there and blowing everything up? Maybe he's destroying the evidence of uh, you know that he's been working with them. But if he was going to destroy the evidence, why would he go there as in in the suit and do it so kind of openly? And they've also got footage. They know that it was him because they had footage from one of the terrorists' video cameras. Because the Ten Rings terrorists tended to wear uh, video a lot of the stuff that they did because they're terrorists and they want the footage to get out uh, but when they did the captured footage of Iron Man that's how S.H.I.E.L.D. knows um, that's how Nick Fury knows that it's Iron Man that, was, that blew everything up um, and it kind of goes on a little bit more and they, they then realise that um, now this is something that was pretty cool they then realise that Tony Stark has been accessing his father's files from World War 2 and that his father worked on a project called Project Rebirth and uh, they kind of say well what was Project Rebirth and he said um, it's still classified but to give you an idea of its importance um, what Stark has is just a prototype of a reject and that um, Tony Stark's father um, was working on allies uh, sorry <laughs> working on allies working on alloys and it kind of shows you Captain America's shield, so there's a bit of a hint there that the metal from Captain America's shield that Tony Stark has from his father's belongings uh, is used in the Iron Man suit, which also fits in the film, because if you remember the bit in the film where Iron Man is, um, you see him kind of taking the suit off and he's kind of struggling with it, in the background you can see um, Captain America's shield like in bits, like it's been kind of taken apart, and that's what uh, Tony Stark used to make the metal for the Iron Man suit. Um, it's a suggestion, and also you see it again in Iron Man Two. So it's a, it's an intentional suggestion. Obviously, that's where they were going, and this kind of uh, elaborates on that. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, it goes on a bit. 
Um, they start to, instead of suspecting Tony Stark as working with the Ten Rings, they start to look at Obadiah Stane and obviously realise that was the case. Uh, but by the time they realise that, that's when things start kicking off and Pepper Potts starts talking to Agent Coulson as she does in the film. The bit where Pepper Potts has got evidence, the bit where she says to Agent Coulson, yeah, we're going to have that meeting, we're going to talk right now, come on. That's when they all kind of start to realise it's Obadiah Stane. So Iron Man and Iron Monger, Obadiah Stane, have a fight. Um, and pretty much the rest of the film kind of goes through it then and... Uh, it shows Tony Stark at the press conference doing his thing and saying, I am Iron Man. And it turns out that Nick Fury, even though sh um, the the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys, Coulson, gave Tony Stark these cards to read from, they knew all along he was going to say, um, I am Iron Man, because it kind of... Nick Fury basically says that Tony Stark's the kind of guy that works better um, off the leash. You know, kind of doing his own thing. You know, he's an inventor. He's you know that kind of thing. Um, he's better off if he, if he's doing his own thing and that he can be a valuable asset that way. Whereas if they kind of control him too much, he will lose his um, his creativity and you know the fact that he's an inventor, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's pretty good. But also at the end of it, it seems like it's Agent Coulson that's suggesting here that actually calls it Shield because um, he refers to his own Agent Fear. He's like, what did you say? And he's like, S.H.I.E.L.D., I like it. I can say it without tripping over my own tongue. How come I've never heard that anyone use that phrase before? And he says, well, sir, I always used the long ver You always used the long version, so I assumed you preferred it. So you can see there's like a few little funny exchanges between Coulson and um, Nick Fury as well. So uh, that's pretty much it anyway. And uh, on that, it then catches up to the bits where, again, in the end of the film, where he says... Um, I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. So it's kind of treads some of the same ground that you saw in the first part, you know, the, the bit that was like a full novelisation just of the film. Uh, this second part, which is called, I don't, I don't know if I actually went, got to the name of it, uh, which is called Security Measures. That was the name of that story that I've just kind of showed you. So the first part was a novelisation of the film that was just called uh, I Am Iron Man. Or just Iron, no, just called Iron, Iron Man. Um, the second, the short story that we've, that we've shown is called Security Measures. The third part in this, well, there's a few pages of kind of artwork, as you can kind of see here. Um, there's a few little kind of bits of information about Kevin Feige, an interview with him. Kevin Feige being the producer of the Marvel films. Uh, but after that, then you've got an old story, which I think is from the... 80s maybe I can't, it yeah 1985 um, it was a story I think it was a two part it was a 200th issue of Iron Man which had um, Iron Man in what was called the Silver Centurion costume uh, and he had a fight with the Iron Monger so it's kind of what the film is loosely based on um, I read, I've read this story before, I haven't read it for this review so it's not fresh in my memory as to what it was what exactly happened but I have read it I think last year uh, in, an, in another thing, so uh, I won't go into it too much, but like I say, it's got a thing about the Iron Monger, so if you want to read an old school Iron Man story from, I say old school, it's from the 80s, um, it's a pretty good story as well from memory, and uh, so that's, that's the third part of this anyway, so good graphic novel to get anyway, um, none of these are expensive, you can get them off your usual bookshops online, I got this one off Amazon second hand, although like I say, it's a bit knackered. Um, now there is, there is one, if you're going to get these, I'll just throw this out now. Um, there's one called Road to Marvel's The Avengers. There's nothing wrong with it as such, but I would, I would recommend you don't get this because this has got a collection of stories that appear in the others. If you're going to buy all of them, the ones I showed you before, don't get this because this contains all of the stories that are pretty much published in these but the bonus of getting these individual ones is they have additional content like for example this one has the the old 1980s one that I just showed you um, so you're better off getting them individually just from a collector's point of view so um, if you're not too fussed maybe get this one and you can skip um, the other ones this this one contains I think both stories that were that were in this, so that was um, just Iron Man, the novelisation of the film, and um, oh no, it's just got the, the novelisation of the film. 
There's one called Public Identity and Iron Man 2 Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. which I think are both in this one which I will be reviewing next. And there is also um, Captain America First Vengeance is also in, in this. So like I said, if you're going to get them individually, don't get this. So anyway, I think I've rambled on a bit too much already, so I'll, uh, leave, I'll leave it there. But next time I'll be reviewing the Iron Man 2 movie tie-in public identity. So uh, we will see you again for that. The website is brandxreviews.com. You can access the YouTube channel through the website, which is just brandxreviews. So uh, we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.